Hey now, welcome to episode 13.2 of Lone Star Mini Restoration. Thank you for sharing in, I believe, or, or, or tuning in. Um, ha, no pun intended with uh, tuning. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, and I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here, as I started this video, I get a, D, I get a, I get a, a WhatsApp message from Alex, the DJSE. Um, Anyhow, yeah, he, he's sitting here texting me, but let me, let me go on with my video. Um, so what year is your Mini? Um, my Mini, this guy right here, is an 82. Now, um, here in the USA, this is a perspective coming from the USA, and I would love to hear if it's different in the UK or other um, understandings of people here in the USA if you're watching this, um, by all means. But this is what I've learned over the time. You know, in the UK, my understanding is the year of your mini, I think in the UK, and this is just I think, I don't know if it's true, but um, perhaps the years of your mini are, are uh, more accurate than they are here in the USA. Um, and I say that because I know you guys have to go through extensive registrations and MOTs and whatnot, um, and you guys are far more understanding or up to date with uh, what a 65 Mini MK1 versus a 1992 Mini. Um, but here in the States, we're not. So here in the States, I believe there's two kind of people. One, the first being the person that just wants to drive a classic Mini. For whatever reason, they've loved them throughout their lives or, they've, or they're new to them or whatever the case may be. They love the classic Mini. They want to drive one. They don't really care about the specs or, or anything. They just want a classic Mini. The second type of person is more of the classic enthusiast who likes to have the, the proper paperwork. Um, Ideally, you know, if you can get a heritage certificate that shows when the car was made, you know, all the specs, the interior, the exterior, everything about it, where it was made, where it was shipped, what dealer, and all that good stuff, um, that's ideal, right? I think it's kind of ideal for me as well because that's kind of what I want. Now, this guy behind me um, is an 82, and I imported it, but I, I'm not, I, let me, I'm getting sidetracked already. So, here in the USA, um, I believe that the minis aren't always as true as um, they claim to be. Um, and, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. But so I have been practicing. I, I have a welder over here and I have been practicing. I am nowhere near ready to touch that sucker to this panel. But so since it's been a few weeks since my last video, I have not been sitting idle. Um, and I'll show you what has just arrived, in fact. Um, but over the time, over the last few weeks, we've had life has hit, right? You know, we've had birthdays, we've had activities, we've had so much going on um, that I haven't been able to touch the mini. So, um, but here it is. So I'm going to go on. Uh, let me, in fact, you know what? Let me go to the other mini because that's kind of the one that I'm going to be talking about. So back to um, standards. Uh, this guy's, the minis were sold here in the States from 1960 to 68. Um, you know, basically eight or nine years. In that time frame, I think there were, in 1964, according to uh, Parnell's book, there were um, 2,198 minis. Um, exported. Now, that's worldwide, not just to America. So a far fewer percentage of those actually came to the U.S. Um, and then of that number, even a fewer number is is a Cooper, and this is an Austin Cooper. So now I have I have a, a wonderful friend there who happened to go to the B British Museum there, and he did some uh, research for me. And it turns out that this guy is a legit... Uh, 1964. It was produced in January of 1964, and it was exported in um, uh, was it October? I think it was October of 1964. I'm still waiting on my. Well, I haven't ordered it yet, but I'm going to order the heritage certificate so that I have it with this. Um, but this guy is legit. It's an American market. It was a private order. It didn't come to a dealership. It was. Um, they think it might have been a serviceman. Not sure about that, but it was a legit American market, and that's why there's some few different things on it. And it was a deluxe model. Um, it was a deluxe Austin Cooper. So, yeah, I am so excited about this because the numbers, I mean, this is this guy, the numbers on this car of how many are over here are probably far and few between um, that haven't been imported since that time frame. Um, but so, uh, yeah, well, scratching my head here. Oh, okay, lessons learned. So, um, according to our Department of Transportation, 
You know, in 1968, these minis were sold from 60 to 68, and then it was shut down in 1968 due to our Department of Transportation um, and Safety Standards. Um, basically, there were three, three reasons. One was um, crash worthiness, post-crash survivability, and then uh, what was the other one? Let's see, crash worthiness, post-crash survivability, and then... Uh, Oh, crap, there's another one. But it's stuff like, um, you know, having a defogger on your glass or on your wind sh windshield. Windshield, gentlemen, windshield, not windscreen. And then also bumpers at the right height or indicators or uh, a lot of things um, went into this, or into their safety regulations. And so they shut, they shut down the sale of the Mini in 1968. Um, so... After that, if you can imagine, for everybody that loved the Mini, they could no longer import them. Um, you, have, they, you can only import a Mini that is 25 years or younger or older, 25 years or older. Um, and so today, you know, 2019, if I wanted to import a Mini that's legal and through, through the importations and all that, I, would, I could not order anything newer than a 1994. So... Um, yeah, I mean, so that's why here in America, when, when they shut down the sale of the Mini, people then scrambled. They scrambled to get Minis and Mini parts any way they possibly can. So, you know, you, you, you kind of understand why you probably have a lot of non-standard Minis here in the USA. Um, a lot of legit ones too, but a lot of non-standard for sure, just because they begged and borrowed and got parts from everywhere possible. Possibly a lot of, a lot of them came down through Canada even. Um, but... So this puppy is legit, and I'm downright excited about it, and I will get the Heritage Certificate uh, with that embossed, uh, you know, logo for sure. So thanks to my friend there in England um, who helped me out, helped me discover that, yep, yeah, it is legit before I go ordering one. Um, so, oh, lessons learned. So, yeah, um, what, it, what in the day before cell phones and texting and emails and all that stuff, um, when I... I actually, I don't know if y'all have seen the video on this. Uh, I posted a video on this in the, my barn find. Um, but the cool thing about it was this is the very mini that I actually touched and was peering through the glass 20 some odd years ago. You know, when it sat in a guy's yard, little did I know, it's kind of cool, little did I know that that mini would be mine 20 some odd years later. Um, well, this is it. Um, but... Uh, when I lived on the East Coast in the state of Georgia, um, I started doing research. And it just so happened before texting, phone calls, and all that, you know, we actually had to get on the phone and talk to people to find out information. Um, so I ended up, I was fortunate enough to call all the way up to Washington, D.C. and talk to the president of the, de of the Department of Transportation. And it turned out that he loved minis. I wish I could remember his name today, but I can't. Um, and I, I tried finding my notes, but I, I couldn't. Um, but he actually drove some of the first minis off the ships uh, when they first came into the country. He was flat excited. So he was more than willing to educate me on how people get minis into the U.S. And then my main reason was because then when I was shopping back in 1980s, the late 80s, 89, 90, somewhere in there, um, I would... Uh, uh, See, I would see minis for sale in, hair, in different uh, magazines, and they were advertising 1985. And I was like, how can you do that? How can I import, how can I buy a 1985 and it's 1989? And so that's when I started making phone calls and got all the way up to Washington, D.C. And um, the, this guy told me, basically, there's three ways minis can enter, in, minis are entered into the USA. The first is totally legit. Uh, they are imported, you know, um, 25 years or older, um, and they have the papers, the titles, and all that good stuff. The second is probably more prominent, and th those are not my words. So if you're here in America and you hear those words, you know, these are not mine. These came from the president of the DOT. Um, he told me that basically, our, especially two decades ago, our import authorities they couldn't tell a 1985 Mini from a 1965 Mini. You know, after all, America's known for Mustangs and Chevys, right? You know, what do we know about Minis? 
So what would happen was is that the VIN numbers would be illegal. They would come off of, I don't know how it happened over in Europe or wherever they were imported from, but they changed the VIN numbers. They put new VIN plates. They're only pop riveted on in most cases. So they change the numbers and they come over here and they call this car. This is not, this one's legit, but they would say that this 1985 was a you know, 1965. Right, they would just change the year of it, um, and the problem. And I guess that's I don't know. It's illegal, but the problem with that is for the classic enthusiasts. Is now I've got a car that that I have a title, kind of like your registration over there. I have a title, a piece of paper that says 1965, you know, Austin Mini, whatever it says. Um, but it's not. You know, it really is like some other year. So that was kind of a, a pro that's been problematic for me. I, I wanted a true car. Um, and then the third way, oh, fourth, third, third way is uh, a little bit more expensive, you know, and it does happen, or it still happens, um, and that is they find a loophole in our system. That loophole says, in the DOT standard says, any motorized keyword, Motorized vehicle entering the U.S. has to abide by our standards, you know, bumpers, blinkers, defoggers, all that good stuff. So what they would do is they take the engine out of the car, they put the shell in a crate, they put the engine in a crate in the same daggum container. It's, the car is no longer motorized. It's just a shell. And so they ship the whole thing over to the USA. Once it gets here, the guys put the engine back in it, and then... It's a legit 1985 or whatever the year is, um, and they get around it by doing that. Of course, that's more costly, you know, for shipping, for ship. The average person, they, they're clueless about shipping, number one, and then it does cost. So in order to take that out of the car and put it in a crate, that's, uh, you're doubling your shipping costs. So those are the three ways that um, minis typically come into the USA. Yeah, so really that's all I was going to share in this video was that I was going to, in my last video, 13.0, um, I basically said that I was, I thought this was a 1964, I wasn't 100% sure, um, so there's still curiosity, but I have identified it is a 1964. I have also verified my 1982, which by the way, let me show you something that's kind of interesting. My 1982, you know, I, I was misled when I bought, I bought it from a gentleman in England. I won't mention names or locations, but I, I was understanding that it was an, an English Mini. Well, this came from freaking... It came from the Netherlands, and it has, I got all the Dutch paperwork, but the problem with that is that nobody here speaks Dutch. So the titles and everything like that was basically bogus. I mean, nobody would accept it. So that was kind of a problem. This is some sort of a, a registration card um, in, from the Netherlands. And, of course, I can't read anything on it other than some things. Like, yeah, there, there are some things that I can read. But, yeah, so now I've got all my parts. Um, I'm excited. Yes, I'm excited about this guy. Um, I've got all my parts. Uh, let me zoom in on that a little bit again. They're almost all heritage. There are a few. There are some brackets that probably are not heritage. Um, but, you know, my seals here, my seals are heritage. My A panels, my full A panels with door seals included are heritage. Most of the A posts are, are um, heritage except for one. Uh, my scuttle is heritage. My, my rear, uh, whatever you call that guy, sunglasses according to my daughter. Uh, that is not heritage. That's a magnum panel. But then my beautiful floor panel. I, this guy... Um, I think it costs as much to ship it as it did to uh, buy it. So, yeah, ain't it great? Thanks for watching. Uh, yes, while my videos aren't as quick as most of you out there, gentlemen's ready, racing, gentlemen's motor racing teams, and John and Tony, and even Stu and Jack, all you guys. <coughs> Y'all are awesome. I mean, I love watching them. Keith Miller, um, you guys are fantastic. Uh, you keep me motivated. You keep me going. That's for sure. So thank you very much. Uh, I am ready. I've got to practice some more because I'm not going to touch the car until I'm comfortable with welding. Um, I'm excited. This guy's legit. I'm excited I have parts. Uh, yeah, ain't it great? So, hey, guys, thank you for watching uh, Texas-sized mini project from Lone Star. Bye just now.